Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few weeks since our last update and we've been doing an awful lot of bits and bobs in the house, such as finishing the floor and starting on our door frames and our architraves. Um, we've got a little bit of our furniture in as well. The kitchen is now completed, except for popping in the tap and just wiring in the ovens and the hob, um, as well as our extractor. So what I wanted to do is give everyone an update, just do a quick walkthrough of the progress that we've made so far. And I'll be popping up another video in the next few days as well, just going through how we're doing all of our door frames. So as you probably know, if you've watched previous videos, a lot of our door frames are odd sizes, so we can't get away with a standard carcass set um, that you would get from your local hardware or DIY. So what we decided to do is actually buy uh, some moisture resistant 30 millimeter uh, MDF from Medite, and we're gonna go and make up our own door frames, and then we have our architrave and our skirting as well. So let's go and have a quick look at the uh, progress so far. So I'm gonna start in the formal sitting room, um, which is the one we're in at the moment. Um, this is at the very front of the house. You can see our large uh, windows there and our two long windows off to the side of the house. It's a beautiful summer's day. We're in the middle of June at the moment. So as you can see, all the grass and the flowers, as well as the weeds are growing outside. So it's, uh, it's very, very lush and green. And it looks really, really nice. And it's very, very peaceful. It's very warm. I think today is close to 21 degrees. Um, so it's a great day uh, to be working down here and it's lovely and quiet as I said. So we've done a huge amount of progress. So if anybody that's seen our previous videos on installing our herringbone floor um, will know it's been a bit of a labor of love. So approximately 450 square meters of herringbone floor is going down in the house. Um, and that is completely seamless all the way through the house. So it runs from the front door all the way through and then the same upstairs and then also in our garage area. So we have our formal sitting room here. So we're at a point in the house now where an awful lot of the bits and pieces are done. We still have to do a little bit of tiling in the bathrooms and pop in our shower trays, and then we'll be ready to have our plumber come in and just do the final fix on all of those, as well as installing the rest of our toilets. So we are just trying to take it room by room at the moment. So as you can see, we've got the herringbone completed in the formal sitting room here. We have it pretty much completed throughout the house, as you'll see in a few minutes. And um, there are a few little triangular cutouts to do in some of the rooms, um, but it, that's only maybe a couple of hours work. So we've got a, a huge amount of it done downstairs. And what we've decided to do is get downstairs completed. Then we can move in, finish off the upstairs and then finish off the garage. So I've been using this room just as a, you know, maybe on a Sunday and stuff like that when I come down here just to take my breaks and different things like that. So we have our sofas in here. So this is a set of two with a uh, footstool with some glass in it. These are from Nav and Sofa Factory. So we designed these and picked out all the fabrics and got them made for the room. Um, and then we have the same uh, company making our sofas for our main living area as well as a seat for our master bedroom and then we're probably going to look at getting something done for the cinema room upstairs we got all of these we got them delivered early and um, with the whole pandemic and the shutdown for the first half of the year we kind of struggled with timelines on things to try and keep things stored and stuff like that so we've had these here for a while but they're now unpacking a little bit of a clean um on the glass and then just a vacuuming but uh really nice and then we also have our skirting in as well so we have um our skirting there so it's uh, quite a high skirting i think it's about 144 millimeters so you're talking close to six inches high it doesn't actually look that high in the room because the ceilings are so high, but uh, it is it is quite a chunky um, skirting. Again, moisture resistant MDF on that. And then we have our architrave there as well. So we've done our first door carcass. Uh, that architrave is 96 millimeter architrave, all mitered in and pinned, and we have it glued. So we're not afraid really of sheet materials like MDF because they've come such a long way now that they are really, really fantastic when you're trying to work with them. Um, Cost-wise, they're actually cheaper if you're gonna go and do a lot of the work yourselves like we're doing with the door frames. Um, and they're quite easy to work with. They're a little bit dusty, but if you have a good blade, they're, uh, they're quite good. So we have uh, our skirting put in there. That came primed, and then what we did was we gave it a, in on these pieces of skirting, we actually gave it two coats of color trend eggshell white. So it's that kind of um, not so shiny or reflective as a satin wood, just a little bit kind of less 
of a reflectance but really kind of a nice luster it's the same paint that they used in the kitchen so we're just trying to match that up now we gave these two coats and i knew i was going to need to give them another coat once they were installed but what i actually found was with the two coats even though we gave about 48 hours between coats i found that the paint actually started to lift when we had these stacked so you can probably see so areas like this started to happen so we got a little bit of lifting so what i'm going to do is i've got another set i'm doing kind of 10 to 12 skirting boards and the same with the architrave links um at a time out in the garage just to kind of keep it away from the house when i'm painting them i've given another set a single coat and i think i'm going to put them on with just the single coat and then do a finished top coat on them rather than doing two coats outside and a third coat in the house i don't think they need the third coat and then also doing the second coat inside might just stop that um the, the paint lifting when it's all stacked together so so we're out into the hallway here now as you can see the picture window looks really really well we have some of our pieces out ready to start chopping our medite mdf for our door frames but as you can see uh it's looking really really well the flooring is looking absolutely fantastic we're really really happy with how that's all turned out um, and if I spin around here, you can kind of get a, a look uh, down the down the house. So we're actually going to start popping a door frame into this section here, and we're also going to pop a door frame into this uh, room here, which is our utility room. That kind of finishes off this section of the house before we go down to our bedrooms. And all of these door frames in this area are to accommodate an 80 inch high door by 34 inches so what you'll find is with standard door sizing unless you're making bespoke you've got an 80 by 34 and an 80 by 32 and it drops down to a 78 by 30 78 by 28 by 26 by 24 so you can get smaller but they're not as high so we're trying to keep our height as uh, as much as possible with the doors we only have one door which is going to be slightly lower which is the wc in the guest bedroom um, and the reason that's lower is because we need a smaller door so it doesn't hit the vanity unit when you open it into the bathroom just because we're caught with the old part of the house there. So we're going to pop in our door frame here. We're going to pop in a door frame into our utility room as well. But as you can see, all of this is floored out here. There are a few little triangles, as you can see there, but we can't get in with the sofas that are going into our main living area. So we need to finish off the main living area, get these sofas in, finish that floor off and get all of our skirting done. So. It is slow progress because at the moment we're only getting two to three hours a day to actually get things done so that's why the progress isn't as fast as it would be on a normal build but to be honest with you it's allowing us to manage the build uh, much more closely uh, it is pretty much me on site now except for our electrician just to finish off a little bit of the electrical the lighting and the sockets and switches um, but it is mainly just me on site until we get the plumber back in to finish off and the plaster to finish off outside on the few little bits um so what i'll do is i'll turn around into the utility room here so you can see here we have our cabinets all built in now so these are from a company called chalford interiors who are based locally here in kildare and um, the stone is from uh, granite and stone um who are based in mead i'll pop a link to all the suppliers uh in the description but as you can see they came in the, the guys that did the stone were absolutely fantastic they came in and they uh, did a, a laser measure on everything they put in the grooves in the stone they fitted all of the basins which we had already bought these are growy taps which we bought online as well so we got a really good deal on them and um, so they were fantastic and they came in and got everything done in one day really nice little details like the chamfer on the edge here and um, which looks really really well and it's really premium just needs a bit of a clean now and that's it and um, we have our Samsung uh, washer and dryer here. I actually need to flip these around because I didn't realize this door opens this way and this door actually opens this way. So I need to switch them around. But these are the add wash units that you can press and you can actually pop your, you know, if you forget a sock or something like that, you can pop that in there. So, so they're all built in. We have our drawers underneath, um, which are for baskets and different things like that. So we can pop clothes in. Um, really, the, the, the meaning of this room is that when our kids or ourselves come in, we can sit down. We're gonna put a cushion in this area here. You sit down, pop your shoes off, pop your jacket up. If you have anything dirty, you can pop it straight into the drawer underneath the washer and dryer. And then we have all of our storage up here, two brasses full, um, which will be there for our washing powder and fabric softener. We have bins, both sides of the sink unit. 
uh, so they're double bins so really really nice units uh, and then we have a full drawer here obviously because of our basin and then we have a full hot drawer here which is full of a few bits and bobs but um really nice for storage we have if i take the ladder out of the way we have our dishwasher in this area here this is a neff dishwasher so we've gone for neff on an awful lot of the cooking and cleaning appliances and um, we got a great deal on them from a company based in glasnevin in dublin um so we got a really good deal on them months and months and months ago we've had them in storage and we have a little storage press there on the other side and then in this area here this is our little coffee dock so we ran our stone through we decided not to run the stone as a full piece into the sink area we wanted this separated out so we're going to have a coffee machine or kettle on our toaster and then we can have you know bread and different things like that in that area so and then you close all that away when you're finished and then on the opposite side basically just full storage units so we have drawers in this area here that we can pull out um all the way up there and then some shelving as well as our full storage area here we have our vacuum cleaner ready to go there's a socket going in that area and then we have some hanging storage here in this press and then some more hanging storage there so you can see just bits and bobs lying around we have our extractor fan ready to go in there some pieces of wood we kept as much material off the kitchen when it was delivered as we could um just because we knew we'd use little bits of sheathing and stuff like that that were left over and then we have our hidden door area here so we've put in our door frame just a very light quarter inch door frame there and um, which has already been painted and then we're going to put a little bead around that just to tidy that up if i walk in the sensor catches me as i walk in turns the lights on and then we have our frame already in there with our architrave so there's no door going on that just going to be like that we're just going to fill the holes and that'll be good to go pop in our skirting pop our toilet on our little um button for our toilet flush and then we just need to pipe in our tap and our basin and we are good to go there'll be a mirror going on that wall there as well but this room has worked out really well and there's actually a lot of space in here so obviously we are underneath the stairs area here so there's not a huge amount you could do with this room and i think what we've done with it we're very happy with Again, our herringbone floor runs all the way through here, as you can see. So worked out really, really well. And then obviously we can close our door like this and completely hidden away. So we're really happy with that. We just need to pop our door frame in and we're good to go. The playroom's looking really well. And we'll get that tidied out once we have the main extension done. And as I come into the main kitchen again from Shalford Interiors, so it's a full extra tall height cabinets with our um, skirting on and our plinths on the top and our mantle uh, which is where our extractor is going to go we've got our nine in, 900 mil uh, hob to go in there our double ovens and warming drawer which is also combi microwave there as well and then all of our presses and then our american fridge freezer will go in that area there and as you can see the island here is quite large we've got our drawer units we've got double doors either side for our presses and then if i pop around here we also have our door units underneath here and these are all on pop latches as well so i can pull them open like this so there's lots of storage in this area a lot of light in this area as well and then the stone is the same uh, company that we use for our utility and this is a cosatino product which is uh Statuario is the name of us, so I'll pop a link in the description to that. The island is actually made to maximize the stone. So when this stone comes out, it's a man-made stone. It does have a little bit of a rough edge, but usually you'll get similar sizes with the way it comes out of the, the, the machine that makes it. And then what we did was we made this island as big as we possibly could uh, to accommodate um, the stone. And then that allowed us to get four bar stools. Again, our bar stools are from Navin Sofa Factory and they also match our dining table chairs. So it's all kind of flowing. We went for a gray, we went for a gray on the island as well, uh, and then an, an off-white color on the kitchen, just to keep it nice and fresh. We'll finish off our walls as well, painting-wise with strong white underneath, and then we're gonna get our uh, mirrored backsplash into that area there as well. So a few bits and bobs to finish off in here. We've already started our skirting, so the skirting is in there it's working out really nicely so we just have to fill where we mitered fill the nail holes and just caulk 
And then we also have a little bead run off on our MDF sheets to go around the door and we're going to match the color of the door with them. And then we have a little threshold strip to go across the doors. Again, this is all mitered in here and we have our skirting done around into this area and then we just need to continue that all the way around. Funnily enough, there's not a lot of skirting to do in here because the kitchen takes up quite a large part of the room and that's uh, skirted already as part of the installation. We were lucky though, we did find a match for our uh, skirting on our kitchen. So that's why we decided to go for this profile. So as you can see, it's a really nice profile and that matches the kitchen, but it's a little bit taller. So we're going to just use our coping saw and notch that into our kitchen skirting and that will all kind of blend in and flow really, really nicely. And then we have our complementary uh, architrave here as well. So if I scoot around to the end here, you can see that's a complementary design as well. So that's why we decided to go for that. Um, and we actually got that from a company in Cavan, uh, up the north of Ireland, just close to the border with, with Northern Ireland. And they delivered it all down one afternoon and really nice guys to deal with again. Um, so I'll pop a link onto their website, but that all blends in. So we're just kind of going for that continuity with everything in the, in the house with the skirting. The doors are going to be a, a kind of a Georgian style door, which are going to blend really, really well with the skirting as well. They've got a nice profile. It's a raised profile on a flat door. And then we're going to do them in the same eggshell white uh, as the as the skirting boards. But this room's going to work out really, really well. We just need to get our final color onto the walls. The ceilings are all done. All of our lights are installed. All of our Google Nests are installed as well for our fire alarms. So it's moving along quite well. We're still up in the air as to whether we're going to do coving uh, in this area because there is a little bit of a, a wobble at the ceiling area and the walls. But again, it's not overly noticeable. And once we paint, it'll fade away as well. We were originally going to go for white in the hallway. We've decided against that. Now we're going to go for the strong white, which is the off-white color we're doing in the kitchen. I think that's going to work out really, really well. Just give a little bit of a contrast with the ceiling. And as you can see, the hallway is done now. We have our switches in. We have our sockets in. We are in time going to take the sockets back off and repaint the little black area around to white so it matches the switches. But uh, really, really nice. And they are all connected onto Google Home. So we can tell all of the lights that are connected onto that to turn on and off and to dim up and down, as well as activating the sockets and deactivating them if we have lamps or anything like that installed. But there is also a manual control on the front. We have one of our bedrooms here. It's a little bit of a storage area. We have a mattress and a topper for the main bedroom in the house. But as you can see, some more triangles just to fill in there. And just a little bit of painting to do. It's a lot of painting, but we need to get our door frames in and get our architraves in as well. Our plant room is coming along. We have our, our broadband connected in here now. Uh, we have some of our Ethernet cables, which we need to bring across. We do have our cylinder to go in here still, so that's going to take up quite a lot of the room. But the main part of this room is our distribution board. Um, from Hager. So as you can see, it's a very, very neat and tidy job. We have all of our bus bars, our distribution bars in this area here as well. So limiting the number of uh, cables, blue and brown tails that we're going to be using. So, um, and obviously this is a bare board right now. We do have a cover plate to go on this and a door unit to go on it as well. So that's going to look really, really tidy when it's done. We have our conjo coming in there as well, just to keep everything nice and tidy. And there's still, still a few little bits and bobs to be done, but all of the lights are now activated around the house as well as a lot of the sockets. So just little bits of tidy up to do, but we're not putting any pressure on the electrician because he's doing a really good job and he just does a day or two every week. Um, so it's working out quite well. Another bedroom, flooring all done. Um, bathroom area, flooring's completed. Just need the skirt, pop on our toilet. We have our shower tray to go in here. We did run the floor in a little bit further than need be because what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop our shower tray down. That's the one that we cut. And then we're going to mark a line along, take it back up, put a piece of tape down, transfer the line onto the tape, and then we're going to get our circular saw. And we are going to uh, basically bring it up to the gauge of the floor and cut that out as a clean line. So when we put the share tray down, it'll just sit down into the floor and we just put a bead of silicone across. that look really neat and tidy. So no, no need for an edge profile on that. So we'll, that'll look really, really well. We're going to continue that in both of the other bathrooms down here. And then upstairs, obviously, we have a bath, so that's not going to be um, a big issue there. We also have our other bedroom down here done and our bathroom. So, again, just rinse and repeat from the other bedrooms. And then as we come in here into our main 
uh, master bedroom area. This is made up of three rooms. We have our walk-in wardrobe, so we're going to have our wardrobes going all the way along here. We're still in two minds as to whether to do a standard door in this area or build it into the cabinets like we did in our utility room. Um, we have all of our growy showers here as well. We have our shower tray for our master WC. We already have a shower tray here, but we just thought this was a little bit too small for the area uh, after putting it down and, and, and giving it a look. So we decided for what was in it, it was only a few hundred quid. We went for the bigger shower tray. So we're gonna go and sell this. And this is a Villa Ryan box. So it's a, a really good quality brand. We don't need to cut this one so we can sell it on now and get most of our money back, I would say, on that. Just need to pop a bit of skirting in here. And then once all these showers are done, we're gonna do a herringbone white tile up the wall, and then we're gonna have our glass panel coming up at the shower area. And then once this is all done, it'll look really, really well. We're gonna do strong white in here as well, I think. And then we'll pop on our toilet, fit our vanity unit, which we just have in temporarily, just to get a view on it, see what it's like size-wise. Um, but that's wor worked out really well. We went for a growy taps and these match the um, toilet uh, buttons as well as the uh, controls for our shower. So, and they're kind of from a similar uh, design. They're all, all square edges. So it'll look really, really well. We got all of these on writer.de, which is a German website that sells bathroom and uh, home um, products. And I think these were close to 50% cheaper than what we could buy them for here in Ireland, which is unfortunate because we like using local suppliers. But when it comes to something like this, I think we were looking at about 8,000 euro um, all in for all of our bathroom uh, fittings. And we got away for, for around four. So we're very happy with the saving on that. But it's just a pity we had to go to Germany to get most of it. And then we have our master bedroom. Again, all of our flooring is done in this area here. And we just have to finish off a little bit of painting up at our Velux. The ceiling is completed. The lights are in on the ceiling. If I actually turn these on, there's a really nice soft start on these. So we can pump them right up. So that's it at 100%. And then I can also dim these right down. Obviously, it's a bedroom. I don't think we'll have these up a lot of the time. So you can bring them right down. Again, it's difficult to see on a sunny day, but... It'll just be nice and comfortable. Now, obviously, we'll have our lamps connected. And then when we turn them off, they have a nice little slow turn off as well. So they're really, really nice. They worked out really, really well. Um, and, yeah, just need to finish off our skirting, do our bit of painting, caulking, filling, the usual decoration, pop in our nest uh, fire alarm. And then we just have our Ethernet cables just to connect up on the opposite end from our plant room. So we have Ethernet switches upstairs and um sockets so we're going to pop all them in as we go um and obviously our door frame so this has worked out really really well we're really happy with how this worked out and the flooring took time but it was actually well worth it to be honest uh popping it down ourselves the overall cost on the floor including our underlay was about sixteen thousand euro we were quoted more than that to fit it on its own so we've saved probably the goods of about twenty thousand and in in uh in laying it but we've also gotten away with very little waste so i'm very very happy with that so we may, may actually have enough flooring left over to do our cinema room which we are we're originally going to put carpet into so i think we should be able to get away with actually doing the flooring there as well so this is just a little storage area for all of our electrical equipment we just had to uh, do a little hatch into our eaves there which we were going to do anyway but we had to do it because we found a cable which had a screw through it and again that's just something that will happen um, as you're doing a renovation like this. All of our lighting is in here with our PIR. We have found that some of our lights, thankfully not any of the ones over our void, which we had to put a scaffold up. But this little guy here, I think there's a little fault with the driver. Luckily, we actually have spare drivers from when we were originally looking at the samples for the house. So we're just going to swap that one out. We have a couple of drivers gone faulty in our cinema room as well. But that's to be expected. There's over 140 lights in total in the house. So I would expect some faulty elements. Um, I'm gonna come back to our cinema room. I'm just gonna continue down the hallway here. As you can see, all of the uh, lights are in here as well. We have a little faulty one there as well, uh, but we'll just change them out. But these are 90 degree diffuse. So again, it's a bright day. You probably wouldn't see the effect of them, but they do leave a nice effect on the wall. And then there's plenty of light in this area. This is a 12 watt. And funnily enough, this light here, 
is actually uh, 12 and the ones as we come up the stairs are nine but they're pretty much the same size so you don't really notice any difference but again in this area once the doors go in it's going to get a little bit darker so we're going to need that extra light but we got away with kind of flowing that through with the uh with the set out of the lighting as you can see up in the attic area we have, don't have a lot done because it's not really a priority we have a little bit still mold uh, on the walls from when it was drying out it is completely dried out and that will wipe off and not return um but it's very very warm up here one thing to say we did install a 16.2 kilowatt heat pump that heat pump hasn't started in about four weeks because it's been so warm outside and it's so warm in the house with the insulation as you know we popped our we did our spray foam in here and that's something i would absolutely recommend any renovation any new build the spray foam has been absolutely fantastic uh, as well as insulating all of our walls so each room is completely encapsulated um and then obviously we have our liquid uh, insulation downstairs uh, and our screed and our underfloor heating device. But the heat pump is the right size for the house and it's keeping the house nice and warm, but it hasn't had to turn on just simply because the house is so good at keeping heat in. Um, I don't know what level of energy rating we are at. We'll have to get that done when the house is complete. Um, but I would say we'll be close to probably an A2. We probably won't get an A1 simply because we don't have solar panels and that's not something we can afford at the moment but down the line we have the services in so we'll be able to get them so as you can see all these rooms this is our bathroom upstairs where our b looks we're just using these as storage areas at the moment as you can imagine there's an awful lot of kit to go into the house same with our office come guest bedroom uh, we just have extra bits of skim and we have our dining chairs there and just some extra uh insulation boards we have our mounting brackets for our TVs as well. So just, just bits and bobs there. And as I come back around, you'll see, um, if I pop out here, you might actually catch the lights coming on. So yeah, so I'm gonna walk out here, the PIR will catch me now. So I'll have to do a quick reset on that PIR. Um, so there you go, the lights are after turning on. It is quite bright in here, so I can actually turn the PIRs down uh, so that the lux level, they're, they're dictated by the lux level or the amount of light in the space. So on a bright day, I think they're probably turned up right now in that they will turn on with very uh, very little light in the area. But uh, what, I, what I'm what i going to do is, is, is adjust them when we get moved in and see how they are performing because I don't want the lights turning on if we have enough natural daylight. And then our last room in the main house is our cinema room. So... The lights in this area are a different type of light. These are a dimmable unit like the rest of the house, but they are plastered in. We use these in our WC under our stairs that we've just seen, as well as over our shower area in our master bedroom. Uh, sorry, in our main bathroom. But we did these in the cinema room here in a higher density just because we wanted an effect in the ceiling. So we're actually going to do a white ceiling and then we're going to do very dark gray or dark navy walls just to give it that kind of dark room obviously there's no natural daylight in this area so we want it to really kind of feel like you're walking into a cinema and i guess now more than ever with the fact that cinemas aren't open um we're going to appreciate this a little bit more so there's not not an awful lot i know it looks quite bare now again we're using this for storage but once we clear out all the furniture there's an awful lot of boxes with beds and there's mattresses and headboards and everything else in here, extra cabling. Once that's all moved out, anything we don't need in the house will go into the garage. Anything to be put together will go in the bedrooms downstairs. This will be cleaned out. Give it a quick vacuum, wipe down the walls, spray with the, uh, with the Wagner spray machine, do our wall colors, pop down our floor. It's gonna be very, very quick. So we'll get that done once we moved into the house. So I'll be doing videos of that as I go along. But if I turn on the lighting here again, we have our switch already connected up. You can see our lights turn on. And these are a really nice effect. We do have two, as I said, in this area that have gone uh, faulty with the drivers when they were put in. So we're just going to swap them out. But it's a really nice effect when I walk down the room here. Again, it's hard to appreciate with all the bits and bobs in the house, but uh, are in the room. So but once the TV goes in and the Ethernet sockets are in and we've got a sofa in here, it'll look really, really well. And we're going to have our kitchen unit in as you come in the door just in this area here as well but again these are fully dimmable as well and the plastered in has worked out really well it's really 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 premium looking so i can actually turn these down so if you imagine you're watching a film and you still want a little bit of downlight you can actually turn them so they're still on so if i just pop over here you can see the 
little glow effect that you get from them and then you can turn them all back up and these are all in 4000 kelvin they do look quite yellow on the video but they're all actually bright white so you can turn all them up and then i can ask google turn these off or i can manually turn them off and they have a really soft turn off sequence as well so they go right down so they look really well we'll get our door frame in get our door in obviously we'll have no natural daylight in here and once it's all decorated it'll look absolutely fantastic but uh i think this is going to probably be one of my favorite rooms as well as our formal sitting room so we're going to be one of my favorite rooms in the house so yeah so a lot done um and we just have a lot of cleanup to do we want to get downstairs completed and then we'll be ready to go really with with up here uh, but i think downstairs is the is the focus and we want to get in in the next few weeks and start living here because we have had the house now over two years and that just shows you the amount of work that's gone into this but if anybody is thinking about doing a job like this be prepared to take on an awful lot of work but at the end of the day it's going to be worth it because it's completely transformed and anybody that's walked into the house really thinks it's it's something that uh you know something to be proud of and we're very very happy with it so far so so yeah so that's where we're at right now so i hope you've enjoyed that update um as i said the next video i do is going to be going through how we're making the um door frames so i'm going to start doing that now as you can see i've got my table saw behind me as well there so we use that a little bit uh, and then we have our circular saw on our straight edge so just basically learning as we go popping them in making sure everything's square um and that's really it so it's it's nothing complex i'm not a carpenter uh, i don't ever claim to be a carpenter but i've done a lot in this house but doing things like skirting door frames architrave even the hanging the doors once you take your time and you understand the process and what you're doing anybody can do it and yeah you will make mistakes but at the end of the day one thing i have learned on this project is that you can make mistakes nothing is going to be uh unfixable you know so we we've got little issues on the house but it's nothing that can't be fixed we've got a strong foundation on the house with our steel and and what we've done here and again obviously our insulation so once you think everything true over that amount of time you'll be absolutely fine so we're gonna we're gonna take it piece by piece we're gonna get these two door frames our double doors and our utility door we're gonna get those frames done we're gonna continue on with our architrave and our skirting and I'll be popping up updates on those as we go through the next few weeks. If you haven't already, pop over onto our Instagram page. So it's the underscore Kildare underscore Reno on Instagram. And you'll see daily updates that we do from when we're working here in the evenings and at weekends. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop me a DM on there or pop a comment on YouTube. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, you can hit the little bell notification as well if you want to get updates as to when we pop up our videos. Um, but thanks again for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it and see you again next time.